Hey, everybody, it's Perch. Um, one of the more common things that I hear from creatives, uh, artists, writers, more writers, uh, for sure. Uh, but <clears throat> I think I, I think that has a lot to do with just kind of how the work begins and where the pitch of a, of a comic starts. Generally, a lot of that work does start with the writer, not the artist. Um, anyway, you know, one of the common things I hear is this, you know, aggressive frustration with what they feel is being blown off. Meaning they go to a convention, they hustle for business, they walk around the floor, they they try to meet editors. It's, uh, you know, there is kind of a, I, well, you know, there's there's multiple sides to this story. I'll tell you, having taken some editors out to dinner and, and you know, for a couple friends in that area, um, editors have gotten to a point in a lot of cases where they almost try and go in stealth mode to the show because they will get kind of mobbed and harangued by writers and they don't like it. So they sometimes they just want to kind of go explore. In some cases, the the editor is a fan of comics. And so they just try and, you know, kind of weave their way through. And and granted, the editor in most cases, in 90% of the cases, are not going to be recognized by you know, their average comic fan, but they are going to be recognized in a lot of cases by writers or by people who want to get work. And so they'll, they'll walk around the hall and they, they just describe getting mobbed that they go there and it's like, Hey, Hey, I, I, I've got an idea for you. And just kind of getting, getting pushed um, quite a bit. Uh, but, and that's, that's their side of the story. Uh, but a lot of writers complain about this, this very common scenario that I hear over and over and over. And it goes a lot like this of just, you know, um, writer shows up, writer talks to editor Editor's like, hey, it's great to see you. Uh, man, the show floor is busy, but definitely we, you know, I, I, I know of a couple of projects I'd like to work with you on. Definitely would like to work with you on a couple of things. Um, it, you know, I've been wanting to do something with you for a while. Uh, let's get, let me get back in touch with you next week when I'm back home and uh, we'll get something going. And then no response, like zero response. And this, this game will get played for, you know, years in some cases. And it, it, it just goes around and around and around. And what's funny, sad, not funny, but, but sad about all this is that the, the, you know, the, the writers by and large, they talk to each other and there's now a, a growing list of editors who do this on a regular basis, who will say, I'm going to get back to you and then, and then don't. And then the variety of, of excuses come up. And they, you know, they're well known at this point for dodging people. And yet, you know, what else is the writer going to do? You know, they go back to the show the next year and you're going to do the same song and dance again with the same guy or, or woman uh, who didn't respond to you the last five years in a row. And you're going to get the same. Hey, you know, and, and the writer, like there's this, this weird underlying tension that when I've talked to editors, editors don't recognize, or they, they don't, they don't seem to notice, but the conversation, cause I've, I've actually been hanging out with both writers and editors when these moments have occurred and the writer starts to go, eh, 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 yeah, I know we we're going to try to find something last year and, uh, you know, didn't, didn't happen, but but hopefully this year, you know, it will happen. And uh, the editor's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, last year, oof, it, it's, it's a, you know, the, the Omicron surge and that, oh, man, it's so, so hard, so hard last year. And and uh, I'm just, I, I, in, in these moments, I kind of, in, in my head, I'm like, man, what's going to be the, when is going to be the moment when this writer's going to just haul back and pop the person? Because <laughs> it's, like, it feels like that, that tension is rapidly getting to this point where, you know, some, so the fists are going to be thrown at some point soon. Cause it's just, it, the, the, the writer is boiling over. The editor is either completely oblivious to this or choosing to ignore it. Uh, but this is, this is a common game within comics. And I'm not saying it excuses a lot of the other stuff that happens, but I do think it is, uh, it perhaps does explain a little bit why sometimes go from zero to 60 now on Facebook or, or, or Twitter when a, uh, you know, a fan is like, Hey, writer, your book sucks. And the writer's like, I, you know, 
or just rains death and destruction upon that uh, kind of random tweet. And I do see a lot of uh, fans like, man, you know, the creator shouldn't be treating people this way. They shouldn't be. Why? Why is this guy so tense and pissed off? Well, in many cases, if you look at the uh, if you look at the timing of some of this stuff, like the in the month that follows, say New York Comic Con, writers are often at their absolute most salty. I, I this is true, by the way. If you if you look at the timeline of stuff, and you look at kind of um, the the weeks before San Diego or New York or you know some of the big conventions, and you look at the month after. Um, there's a dramatic difference in those two. The before, um, people are a lot less pleasant. There's a lot less drama going on. There's just, there's just people are on good behavior. They're just less. If you look at them, they're like, but not right away, not right after the convention, but you know, two weeks to one month after the convention, people seem to lose their minds. And my theory is that a lot of this is just boiling over frustration of, I went there to the show, I hustled, I got nothing, nobody's getting back to me, I'm right where I was two months ago, and I, screw comics. That's, that's where it is at. Um, I, this cycle plays out over and over and over and over again. Um, it's, you know, I, I'm not saying like this is a big broken part of the industry. Um, I think it's, it's better when people can get, you know, if, if your job, I don't think anybody, by the way, is owed a response to anything, but you know, if your job is to solicit talent and talk to talent, then you, you meet talent and you talk to them. It's kind of like a lot of companies. If you apply for the job, some companies have a policy where they will very specifically, you know, reach out to you and say, um, you did not get the job. You know, they, they, they have to respond to every applicant. And that's becoming more of a norm. And in a lot of cases, just a closing of the book. In a lot of cases, it's self-serving because they, you know, they're just wanting to kind of inform the candidate, stop, stop reaching out. You're not getting the job. Um, but in comics, it, it does operate a little bit more old fashioned where this is concerned. And there's often just no response. And it's a guarantee that in a lot of cases, the editor is looking at this writer going, I, I don't have any interest in working with you. I don't like your stuff. Um, but you know, kind of along <clears throat> along those lines, there's a lot of writers now and artists. This is where there's a little bit more artists in play who will put their portfolio up online, and then they will put in you know Google Analytics or you know a method in order to see if anyone actually looks at it, and they could tell if anyone opened the samples or read anything or did anything. In a lot of cases, the they don't. The, you know they. They see no traffic, no response. And that's, you know, I get not uncommon. And, you know, what, again, nobody is owed anything. But in a world where, you know, you're out there soliciting talent and people are, are handing you things and then nothing is occurring, you're not, you're not reading them, you're not looking at them, you're not even getting back to anybody. Um, it does feel like a bit of a broken part of the chain. It feels like, you know, part of that job is just not being done. Now I've brought this up before and editors, uh, leadership will say things like, yeah, but uh, you know, when you're meeting a hundred people, it's not feasible that you can get back to a hundred people. Well, my answer to that is yeah, actually it is, it's not that hard. You know, I, you know, there's this, uh, magic, uh, method that can be utilized where you write a form rejection letter and then you alter the name and then you copy and paste that rejection letter and you send it out over and over. I mean, that can be done. But I guess the other kind of takeaway from all this is kind of inside baseball, um, which, yeah, you know, you, there's lots of industries that operate this way. This isn't some big magical comics only thing. But kind of the note I would give to people who work in comics, um, you know, mostly editors, but also creatives, is, you know, how well known this is. You know, Alana Smith, for example, is often discussed in, in groups on, you know, in, 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 you know, in various Facebook groups, Google Docs, other places, as being somebody who is phony, who does not get back to people. And this isn't the fans, this isn't angry you know, uh, 4chan thing. 
that that, that kind of conversation is going on. Um, it is the comic professionals themselves. It is the writers who, you know, will talk crap about these individuals openly and, you know, has this bad reputation. This isn't, again, this isn't a bunch of angry YouTubers. This is comic writers. And there's, there's a handful of names like that that just are hard disliked. But when it comes time for convention time, everybody zips a smile onto their face and is like, hey, remember me? I'd like to work for you and everything else. And I do think they're, you know, I've, I've had this conversation with editors of, hey, when we've lost our job or, you know, when things go kind of tough, you know, suddenly nobody wants to talk to me. And it's like, well, yeah, because the relationship is purely transactional. The only reason anyone's talking to you is because they want a job. And in many cases, they, they don't like you because you don't get back to them because you, you know, by and large, you know, have, have bad email skills. Um, you know, Chris Conroy is another one, quite frankly, who is, you know, lots and lots of people talk about people being creators, people being writers as, you know, a, a really annoying person who doesn't give out, you will say they're going to get back to them. We'll promise they're going to get back to them. We'll say, I definitely will get back to you next week, et cetera. And then doesn't. And this is, uh, this is just part of comics. But anyway, I, I offer this up to you as, as part of, uh, you know, for, for the fans out there, um, you know, again, it doesn't excuse anything, but remember that this kind of stuff is just going on behind the scenes on a constant basis. And it, it, it is one of the most common complaints that I get and I hear from writers is just these collection of people that promise, pledge, swear, I will get right back to you. I will write you next week. I will get on the phone. We Let's definitely do something. Because, I mean, the, 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 of course, the braver thing to do is to say, hey, I don't have any openings right now. Um, wish I did, but I just don't right now. And um, hopefully soon. But, you know... I don't expect to call next week because I don't have anything to call you about. That'd be a braver thing to do, but, you know, again, in this space, who knows what would happen. Maybe that's going to cause some writer to flip out. And I do think that that game is played, too, where the editor's like, you know, this writer's a lunatic. I've seen him go after other people, and if I just give them a rejection, then, you know, they're going to cause much trouble for me behind the scenes. It's amazing how much of comics operates on a behind-the-scenes shenanigans. Um, you know... <laughs> Just so much of it is based off of weird fears and concerns and, you know, what's this person saying about me and is this group? I mean, just so much of comics operates that way. And the comedy of it is, you you know, you heard people talk about the, uh, you know, 12 psychos who, uh, you know, have all this behind the scenes power, but those people are, are broke and they don't have active projects and they don't actually have, I mean, the, the comedy and a lot of the editors are extremely low paid. Who has the power in this situation? Everybody is kind of scared of everybody else. And they're all, there's all this like, ooh, I, 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 you know, how many times have you had somebody slide into your DMs and, and gossip and, and, and did you realize they're going to make a video about you over here? Um, I, this happens on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I hear this person's going to make a video about you. Like, I, okay. Uh, there, there's so much of that behind the scenes you know, be careful, be careful. There's, there's, this is happening. And yet nobody has any power. Editors paid less. The most obnoxious uh, writers who traffic and gossip don't, don't even have active projects, have to uh, ask for GoFundMes, talk about how they're about to be homeless because they're kicked out of their apartment because rent went up like $50 and they can't afford it. I mean, you know, teeth are falling out of their head. This is, this, it's, it's, it's so, it's so, it's so sad. It's, it's funny. It's, it's a world where people live in terror of behind-the-scenes crap, and yet none of the people pulling those strings have any kind of life worth living. <laughs> uh, this is superheroes. Anyway, thanks for listening. 